Hey guys, Zane here with another One Take Review. Today I wanted to talk about the most recent Black Country New Road album, their sophomore album, which is called Ants From Up There. It is, uh, like I said, their second album after last year's For The First Time, which was their debut LP. Uh, I thought For The First Time was a great record. I thought it was the second best debut of the year, only behind uh, Silk Sonic's debut. And I thought it was just generally among some of the best that uh, rock music had to offer last year. So, of course, I was uh, very, very excited to see what they were going to do with their follow-up album, and they definitely delivered here. First of all, before I get into the rest of the album, I do want to talk about uh, Black Country New Road frontman Isaac Wood. Um, I'm sure most of you who clicked on this are already aware, uh, probably, but Isaac Wood has uh, now officially left the band. Uh, this is going to be his official last record with them. Uh, this was announced on Twitter via a letter that uh, Isaac actually had written out himself, uh, just documenting his reasons for leaving, and um, I obviously I can't say anything myself as I wasn't a part of the uh, you know situation. I'm not Isaac Wood, I'm not any of his bandmates, but um, in my opinion, the way that the letter read, it was just very obvious that uh, Isaac has been just uh, struggling with probably, I would assume, the pressure of the music industry, and I can only imagine how difficult that uh, truly, genuinely is. And although it is a shame to see him leave, especially this early into a uh, very fantastic band's career, um, I'm happy for him. I hope that he uh, gets better soon, and I do uh, just wish all of the best for uh, Isaac in the future, whatever he may do, be it uh, going into other music projects or just taking a step back from the music industry as a whole, just completely. And with that being said, uh, besides the fact that uh, it's better to just focus on your mental well-being than uh, to make music, it is also uh, important to note that uh, Isaac went out on a pretty amazing performance here, honestly. I mean, between just besides the, his guitar work, which I'll talk about later once I get to the actual instrumentals, his vocal work is fantastic as well. I mean, he has that sort of controlled quiver kind of uh, softer voice that he uses on the album's more chill moments than uh, on some of the more upbeat or just like striking moments. He can do this really impassioned sort of ramble talk singing sort of thing that kind of occasionally goes into yelling but not quite. It's just, it's incredibly emotional and I won't say it's impressive from a technical stance because it's not. It's not like Isaac has some massive range or anything like that, but he's just an incredibly powerful vocalist that just completely put his heart and soul into this record, and it's sad to see him go, but like I said before, A, it's better for him to be doing well on a personal level, and B, he's going out of this band with a pretty electric performance in my opinion. One of the uh, aspects of Black Country New Road as a band that have always really caught my attention is their usage of the saxophone, the keys, and also the violin all at once alongside traditional rock instruments. The saxophone here is performed by Lewis Evans, the keys are done by Mae Kershaw, and the violin is performed by Georgia Ellery, and all three of them were very important to Black Country New Roads' debut album for the first time last year, as they heavily contributed towards that claustrophobic factor that really defined that record, and it's not the same here, and I mean that in a good way. Things are switched up here, but not enough that they aren't important anymore. Instead of creating an almost apocalyptic feel like they did on their debut, the three of them sort of act as more of a, uh, just a very subtle kind of atmosphere-building aspect of the record. I won't say that there's really that many pieces of uh, saxophone performance, or there's no like violin solo that really stands out to me as really amazing or anything like that. But that's sort of the point, outside of a couple songs, like uh, Mark's theme, that are entirely based around those instruments. But the point of them is to sort of build this uh, very uh, emotionally tense atmosphere that sort of uh, kind of just whisks you off into the world that this record ends up building. And Ants From Up There is just really an emotionally powerful record, and I don't think it would quite, quite be the same without the uh, saxophone, keyboard, and violin work that's been brought to this album. The other members of uh, Black Country New Road are Tyler Hyde, who acts as bassist for the band, as well as Luke Mark, who is one of the guitarists alongside Isaac Wood. And Tyler Hyde, as a bassist, is uh, very impressive, delivers some strong bass lines that are abstract, and overall Hyde just uh, brings a lot of uh, really uh, strong work to the table that manages to stand out while providing a solid backbone as bassists are meant to do. 
Now, Luke Mark and Isaac Woods kind of, or Isaac Wood kind of, work together to create a duo that almost sound like one individual playing a really amazing guitar and some of the best guitar of their life. Or life. And even though I wouldn't say there's a lead instrument on this album, I would at least say that there is sort of this technical proficiency found in uh, the guitar work here that's not found in the rest of the instruments. Uh, I wouldn't say it really stands out, but the uh, performance that is managed to be accomplished here by both uh, Mark and Wood is just extraordinary. I mean, they just really make their guitars sing. It's just so emotionally powerful and emotionally charged that you may as well just consider the guitars their own vocalists. I mean, it's fantastic, really, even if it's not the kind of album to have some epic solos. This Ants From Up There is the antithesis of thrash metal, basically, and I mean that in the best way possible. This this album is controlled beauty that could descend into chaos at any moment, and on occasion it does, but it never really quite goes there, and it's all the better for that, and that really does show in the guitar work. Black Country New Road's most recent uh, album is very lyrical as well. I won't say that you need to understand or read the lyrics to appreciate the record, but I do think Ants From Up There is one of those albums that does have lyrics that really enhance the experience overall. And uh, the entire album was written by Isaac Wood. And it's very obvious that it's a very personal album to Wood. I don't know in what way. Uh, like I said before, I'm not Isaac Wood. I can't tell anyone these things. But I do personally feel like uh, that abstractness and uh, crypticness of some of the lyrics do come from a uh, very, very deep place within Isaac Wood and his uh, poet's heart, if you will. I mean, the writing here is incredibly sentimental, but you do have those occasional, like, pop culture references thrown in that add just a touch of humor, like uh, the constant, or I shouldn't say constant, but occasional mentioning of uh, Billie Eilish. That sort of makes things, I don't want to say totally humorous, but it, it does make things feel a little more lighthearted just as the album feels like it may be getting a little too self-serious or just self-indulgent, which it never becomes, by the way. But I do think that uh, Isaac Wood, even through uh, the fact that we may not always understand what he is saying, it's obvious to me, at least, that Isaac Wood is one of the most profound songwriters that England in general has seen through any genre in maybe years, to be frank. And as I talk about all of the emotion that's put into this record, I just have to say that is the one word I would use to describe Ants From Up There. Emotional. This is just an emotionally powerful, gut-wrenching record at times, especially as it reaches its end with tracks like Snow Globe and uh, Basketball Shoes. It's just a... It's, it's an emotional epic, is what I would say, I guess. It just kind of a creates its own universe and just runs with that idea. I mean, from the second that you start this album, you're kind of taken to another place that I haven't personally heard in any other album. And you're taken to that place, and then that place, after you get used to it, is just sort of burnt down around you, and you're forced to watch it just crumble before your very eyes. And I know that is a bleak way of uh, talking about an album, but that really is what this feels like in the best way possible. It's just, it's emotionally stunning as a record, and I don't think I've ever heard anything else that's quite like it. I won't say anything too much out of respect for the band's lead singer, but I do think that a large part of this does come from Isaac Wood and uh, whatever his state of mind may have been when the recording of this album took place. And, I mean, again, I won't say much, but I do think that some of the best music comes from people in very vulnerable times, unfortunately, and this is no exception to that. This is just the uh, individual who I was, I'm sure was in a... Uh, very, very, I'll say, uh, difficult time in uh, his life that sort of just ended up composing lyrics that meant a lot to him, putting in the vocal performance of a lifetime, and ended up, along with a bunch of incredibly talented other musicians, made one of the, uh, the best record of the year so far, and one of the greatest albums I've heard in a while, in all honesty, and I really hope that one day, decades down the line, we look at Ants From Up There the same way that we do albums like uh, In the Court of the Crimson King, or uh, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, or even uh, Wish You Were Here, in the way of them being these just uh, epically emotional, powerful albums that just sort of capture your attention and refuse to let go, even if it kind of makes you cry halfway through. And I know that sounds like a very dumb description, probably, but this album is just, it's moving, and... 
just improves upon everything that their previous record for the first time did so well already. So, in conclusion, I didn't expect to say this so early in the year, but uh, this is a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Uh, it really is just a emotionally devastating album, but I mean that in the best way possible. And it is sad to see Isaac Wood leaving the band so soon after they just started, but I'm happy and I'm glad and I hope that, uh, you know, whatever he may be uh, suffering from, uh, whatever it may be, uh, that he does begin to recover from it. And I hope he's going to be doing better now that, uh, you know, he's no longer facing the pressure of the music industry for the most part, as far as I'm concerned. At least, again, I don't know the entire story. But uh, I digress. The rest of the band have said that they are going to press on without Isaac Wood. And I don't know what it's going to sound like. I'm not entirely sure who's going to front the band at this point. Uh, I'm assuming one of the members already there. Uh, it could be uh, any of them, really. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. But uh, I can't really say what the music is going to sound like uh, without Isaac Wood. And I'll, uh, I'll be here to listen to it whenever it does come out, which I'm sure will be soon, because this and for the first time only took a year apart to come out, so I'm sure it won't be too terribly long. But until then, all I can say is that... Uh, Isaac Wood leaving this band kind of feels like the closing chapter of one really great book that is composed of two chapters, unfortunately, for the first time, and Ants From Up There. And if for the first time was the really strong exposition, then Ants From Up There was the epic conclusion that really every short-lived band like this does deserve. And I'm excited to see what comes next, and I do think that this was a closing chapter on one of the greatest books we've uh, had in a while as far as uh, music to literature comparisons go and with that being said I'm, I'm surprised I'm giving this out so early in the year and so soon after I just did uh, another one but I'm giving this five stars out of five I genuinely think this is a masterpiece I I listened to this a few times now just to make sure that I wanted to give it that ranking but I actually absolutely do this is just an emotionally powerful album that I don't think comes around too often and I do think that this will be a uh, kind of considered a legendary album in the future there are a lot of albums that I truly love but I do debate if I want to give them the scores that I do just based on how well they may or may not age but I don't know I think this one's going to age amazingly so yeah five out of five stars this is just an outstanding record and with that being said, that is uh, the end of this review, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.